Sorry about that. Uh, so today's topic, we are going to talk about senior dog, sorry, senior dog behavior. So first of all, July 7th, let me put this line here so you can read this. I am hosting a hybrid here at the Bella Behavior Learning Center, July 7th in Tuscola, Illinois. I will be um, hosting an in-person, but then I will live stream it also senior dog workshop. So this can be from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. And I'm gonna, as I'm right now today, just outlining, gonna talk about and present what the common behavior changes that we see in senior dogs, why they happen, what we can do to help them. And I'm then gonna have some hands-on skills for how we can go about like training our dogs. We can use body work, things like massage therapy to help give them relief from say pain, triggered aggression, or other anxiety problems. There's a way to do um, massage techniques to reduce anxiety. And then lastly, discuss nutrition, some of the different supplements and medications that we have available for our older pets, our older dogs that is, to decrease some of the effects from these three primary areas, the pain, inflammation, sensory changes, and cognitive dysfunction syndrome. So, Workshop on the 7th, go to my website, drsalajfoot.com. Now you can look on the event calendar, but if you don't see it there, go underneath the veterinary tab and where it says speaking events. That's where I have the registration pages and you can register for it. It includes two months of support to you with working with your own older pet at home for these behavior problems. It's gonna have content and everything. Okay, so today's Facebook Live, um, talking about senior dog, behavior, when we're having behavior changes or just development of behavior um, that we hadn't seen before in the younger dog. So let's define the senior dog. We're gonna talk about dogs over the age of seven because once dogs are seven years of age, they do have some fundamental uh, DNA changes happening in the brain. Even though they may still look spunky and fine, they're, they are starting to have some changes in their brain which is gonna to lead to some changing um, ways that they think, ways that they respond as they then become eight, nine, or 10 years of age. Secondly, by age seven, we start to see a lot of these older middle age, you know, dog body conditions, things like infl inflammatory conditions, especially. So this is where we get what we call the pain triggered or pain induced behavior changes. And so it's usually due to inflammation and that's Three primary areas where we see inflammation in the older dog's body is going to be arthritis. Okay, so somewhere along that spine, going from the neck all the way down to the tail, the base of the tail, there may be anywhere along that spinal column is the most common source for inflammation that then creates, that inflammation creates these biochemicals that shower in the body, and first of all, do create aging changes in the brain, but then secondly, that inflammation or irritation in the body, we know can have where they are more sensitive to touch. Touch is more intense, so they avoid petting, being petted. They're avoiding wanting to get touched. They may be growling or snapping or snarling or ducking and showing anxiety when other housemate dogs are kind of rough and tumble playing or toddlers wanting to grab at them. So arthritis is a biggie. Now we can also see arthritis in like the elbow joint, the knee joint, the jaw joint, but it's usually along the back and then secondarily in the hip or in the knee or the elbow. Teeth. Teeth are a big, big source of pain and inflammation in the body. Really, I don't think a lot of us appreciate how much that tartar, you know, building up on the teeth that then creates an ascending infection going up into the tooth root because the pets, they're not going to complain about, oh, the side of my mouth hurts. They just chew on the other side. And as an owner, you know, or they'll swallow the nuggets of the dog food whole, so they're eating fine. Uh, they may still play with their toy, but they may hold it more on one side of the mouth than the other, or it may just be a difference in how they play with the toy. And it's subtle. So instead of pulling and, you know, pulling and tugging with the tuggy rope so much, they may pick the tuggy rope up and flip it in the air and catch it because it's less grinding and less pressure on the jaw. And that is because of the inflammation that's going on in the teeth. So 
if your veterinarian is talking about getting a dentistry done or examining the teeth, um, they can really bring a lot of benefit to decreasing that pain and then improving play behavior, decreasing fear and decreasing anxiety. And then lastly, skin. Skin is a third area where we may have, you know, that chronic rash, allergy, inflammation, inflamed ears, inflamed along the lip, you know, and the chin, chin acne. Again, these can be areas of chronic inflammation, showers on the body, that creates, creates aging brain changes, which then can reflect in an increase in aggression, an increase in anxiety, or an increase in compulsive behaviors. Okay, so first wanna rule out body inflammation and manage this. This is the age, we're gonna keep them on that uh, prescription diet. We're going to keep them on a vitamin supplement, omega-3 fatty acid supplement, whatever is recommended by the veterinarian. Really important here, you not only get to the vet for the one checkup, stick with some kind of a regular recheck, and it might be a tech appointment that's the recheck to check the weight, look in the ears, et cetera, and then they report to the vet, fine, but let's stay on top of it. Okay, let's stay on top of it. And frankly, this is really where those rechecks on our older pets, that's where I really love using telehealth and telemedicine, because now I can see how he's walking around the home, moving around the home, how are we exactly you know, functioning in the home? You can do a close-up of the skin. You can do a close-up of the teeth. I can watch them walk around and I get a better analysis or evaluation of their gait that way than five minutes in the office. But anyway, managing the pain, managing the inflammation. Sensory changes. Now, blindness and deafness, those are the two primary senses that are going to decrease as our dogs age. We usually see this happen when the dogs um, small breed dogs, it may not be till they're about 12 to 14 years of age. Our larger breed dogs like Labradors, German Shepherd, Golden Retrievers, we're going to start seeing these changes starting to come in around 10, 11 years of age, a little bit at a younger point. Now, they can also lose the sense of taste, the sense of smell, and like how well they can feel, the sensation of touch. And that can be a little harder to interpret. And if you watch the behavior of the dog, you can pretty much tell which one is starting to lack. By and large, most all dogs are gonna have degrade, degradation in vision and in deafness. And they don't necessarily all go blind, but changes in the lens, um, this nuclear sclerosis is what it's called, changes in the lens, it's, it's similar to getting cataracts, now make it harder to focus, uh, they can still see movement in general, shadow, light, and dark, but they're not, their vision is not as sharp. And as I would say to my clients, well, you know, they're not so affected by it because they don't have to read a newspaper. They don't have to, you know, sign papers. They don't need that sharp, up-close vision. So we oftentimes, pet owners, will not see, oh, you know, he's stopping before he goes into the dark um, hallway from the brightly lit entryway because now his eyes have to adjust and he can't really see the difference so well. We may not notice that until they're older. And what we might see is a dog kind of stopping and hesitating and then doing a lot of sniffing because the dogs will then rely on their other senses that are working well. So behavior change would be he's hesitant to go in this room or he's sniffing everything all the time. Oh my gosh, he just is like, everything is this intense sniffing or like licking. Well, that's because he's lost these others, other um, senses. So he's using the ones that are working well to be able to interpret his world. Deafness, that's the other one. So deafness, again, that could also be hard to tell because dogs can pick up on the smells and other things. But if you find, of course, you're having to call your dog or a dog who was really afraid of thunderstorms or loud noises, 4th of July, now is not, it's because you can't hear it. Now, there's a change in the range of what they will hear. So some dogs, as they're aging, may get very anxious about high-pitched noises or high-frequency noises. So maybe now the ding of the microwave. Now, if you have some other kind of ultrasonic devices, they're avoiding it or they're barking at it or they're getting upset about it. Okay, but sensory changes. This is the second area of physical aging change that can create behavior changes. Now the last one, cognitive dysfunction syndrome, CDS. Cognitive dysfunction syndrome in the dog has been well recognized for at least 20 years now. And there's always some more development knowledge, developing knowledge on 
how it develops, how we see it, et cetera. And so I'm going to do another Facebook Live all about CDS in itself. Um, but CDS, the big acronym we think of is DISH, D-I-S-H. And one stands for disorientation, I is for interaction, S is for the sleep-wake cycle, sleeping in the night, waking in the day, and then H is house soiling. Okay. Now, and then in cognitive dysfunction syndrome, we have three levels. We have mild, moderate, and severe. Now, what gets challenging about making the diagnosis of cognitive dysfunction syndrome is that inflammation in the body and pain may then create where the dog doesn't want to come up to you and be greeted as much. Or if you go to pet them, they turn and they walk away. And they may not look terribly anxious, but turning and walking away is a sign of anxiety. So is it because he like, I can't remember why I walked up to you. See, that's a disorientation. Uh, I think I'll leave. Or, oh, humans here, I could care less. I don't want the interaction. I don't notice you came in. So, But maybe it's because I don't want you to pet me because my back is sore. Or when you touch my skin, it feels so much more intensely, you know, it intensifies that irritated pain feeling over my lower lumbar spine, over my back, around my ears, or maybe I have a mild or chronic ear infection that can't get better now because molder. So this is where CDS signs will be very similar to the symptoms or signs we'll see with these other two common areas that add in behavior changes of the dog. So to help my clients and to keep it, I guess you'd say simple, to figure out what is, why is this older dog changing his behavior? What can we do to help them? The first thing I really would focus on are these two. Where are we at with those? Let's get a good physical examination and pair it with a telehealth consult because things like deafness, blindness, I can pretty much and I need to, I need to do an eye exam and look in the eye and my ophthalmoscope, look at the retina, check the pupil or light reflex, look at the lens of the eye. And then watching the dog a bit coming and going from, you know, with it going, walking in the door of the veterinary practice, you know, walking through like a dark area to a light area. How are they maneuvering outside? How do they get in the car? That can give me a pretty good evaluation on their vision. Okay. But deafness, that can be really hard to tell. And in the home, then seeing what does he turn and notice with background noises in the house or the client being, I'll tell the client, go two, two rooms away and call your dog and see if he'll come to you because he knows his home. He won't be, you know, if he's going to come, he's going to come. Anyway, it's easier, I feel, to evaluate deafness using a telehealth consult. And then lastly, the pain and the inflammation, arthritis, we may be able to feel that, you know, in a joint. It's got to be pretty advanced to feel a swollen joint, though, and to hear kind of any grittiness. We're going to be at very end stage arthritic, inflammatory joint disease then. But to see how well can they get up, how well or easily do they rise, what is their gait like? Are they doing any of that bunny hopping, you know, up and down the three steps to get in and out of the house or up and down the deck in the backyard? Even if it's a ranch house, there's going to be at least one or two steps, you know, from the door out to the grass. Do they walk differently in the house on vinyl flooring as compared to concrete outside as compared to grass? Because if I can see a difference in their gait, it's going to tell me, well, it's a difference in body strength and how well they feel secure with their footing, which again can move point much more in this inflammation pain direction. And again, that's what we're going to see with like a telehealth consult and add that information into the in-person physical exam. Um, so determining these two things and managing them, I will still keep CDS in mind, but then we're gonna say, as part of our recheck, we're gonna have those questionnaires, really great ones for clients that you can fill out and kind of monitor how well, how easily does my dog find the doorknob side to the door to go to when it's time to go for a walk? Or is he always standing by the hinge side? Or does he do that walking in the living room and stop and like, why did I come in here? I can't remember. And walk out. Okay. Um, when I come home from work, when I, you know, walk in the room, 
Does he look up at me and you're like, hi, how you doing? Or does he look around like that? Uh, sleep chart. When they go to sleep, how well do they sleep through the night versus waking up? Because a lot of sleep interruption can happen with, you know, pain in the body, uh, chronic inflammation, pain in the body, because when they're sleeping and there's less distraction, they kind of feel the pain more. Um, and a whole day of like using their body until they get a few hours of rest, then the body is still irritated. So they may be getting up and laying down and panting a lot. So again, we want to make sure that pain and inflammation is well managed as we're evaluating sleep patterns. And then house soiling. House soiling as well. Uh, early kidney disease where the kidneys cannot concentrate the urine while they are going to urinate more in the house. Let's make sure we do these urine analyses. Um, do a stool test. Old dogs can still get worms. They can still get roundworm, hookworm, whipworm, coccidia, giardia, and tapeworm. So let's make sure we're doing our fecal tests at least twice a year and so that that's not an aggravator to maybe having bowel movements in the home, okay? Um, and then actually watching your pets go to the bathroom. So you can see, can they get in position or not? Or are they, is it just coming out, okay? So again, these first two, but then we always kind of keep in mind these first two as we're going through and evaluating for cognitive dysfunction syndrome. All three of these sources of behavior changes are issues that the earlier we can find these, how should I say it, like these sources of the behavior change, these diagnoses of the diagnosis, diagnosis, excuse me, of the behavior change, earlier in, in the process of it, the easier it is, the better it is to help reduce the impact of the behavior changes it cause. Okay, what I mean is if we've caught a dog before they become really severe with their arthritis, a lot of muscle wasting, you know, a lot of chronic pain, a lot of joint bone spurs, then we have, we can, the medications to help decrease that pain and help them with the ability to move around and have a good quality of life are going to work better if we caught it earlier. And with less of that, let's just call it the junk of inflammation, showering on their brain, causing those changes. Because the longer that junk showers on their brain, the more damage done and the harder it is to regain back good brain function. Same thing with sensory changes. The sooner we can figure out that they're having a harder time to see or a harder time to hear, and we can then bring enrichment for them. We can use things like food puzzles. We can take them on short walks in safe areas so they sniff a lot, they feel different textures. We make sure we set the home up that it's easy for them to sense their way or like see their way, if you will, through the house by using like contrasting colors to like, where's the edge of the wall? Where's the edge of the step? And that we are conscious of, if you can't hear that well, then let's always have a way that he might be on a long leash, but he can see me and I'm gonna do a special wave so he comes to me and he's not worried about like, where, where's my owner? Where's my owner? Where's my owner? You know, if they're off lead and wandering around. Um, and then lastly, of course, too, the earlier we start to pay attention to what my dog play behavior, um, play behavior, come in the room, orientation, interaction, sleep cycle, and house breaking, like how well they're trained for their, you know, soiling, then we, there are lots, there's lots of things now that can help with CDS. There are going to be these supplements and different therapies are going to be more effective at slowing the progression of CDS down. Um, thank you very much. I look forward to hearing from you and I look forward to your comments. Uh, please consider coming to my workshop on July 7th. Um, I'll be doing my Facebook Live next week again. I'm going to focus more on the senior pet and keep uh, picking up on these topics. So thanks a lot and take care. Bye-bye.